Hey there, welcome to week two of the online Bible study for Creating Me a Heart of Hope. My name is Mary Carver. I'm the author of this book and your host for the study. I am so glad you're here. Okay, have you gotten your book yet? It looks like this. She's so pretty. Don't tell the other books, but she's kind of my favorite. Okay, if you haven't gotten your book, that's okay. It's not too late. Head over to encourage.me slash heart of hope and you will find a handy dandy list of all the stores that are carrying the book. So just pick your favorite, click, buy the book, easy peasy. While you're there, not at the store, while you're at encourage.me slash heart of hope, make sure that you officially sign up for this study. There's no cost to you, but when you give us your name and email, that will allow us to send you the first week of the study for free, and then also to send you some printable scripture memory cards. So. Make sure you do that. It's encourage.me slash heart of hope. Okay, so we are going to be gathering every week for six weeks, and we're going to discuss what we're learning, the questions we have, and then share how God is actually, he's doing it. He's creating in us a heart of hope. I'm so glad to be sharing this time with you. You might notice that my voice sounds a little bit croaky. Um, I'm sick. Uh, we're going to be talking about hope when you're waiting, and I'm currently waiting on a cold to work its way through my body, but I didn't want to miss out on meeting with you, so here we are, okay? All right, week two. Now, after we covered the very basics in week one, what is hope? I wanted to start with waiting because I feel like, I feel like when we talk about um, our struggles with hope, the first thing that comes to mind for most of us is something that we are waiting on whether we're waiting for something to change or waiting for an answer. It's those times of waiting where we've asked, we've prayed, we've maybe done the work, and then we don't see results. We don't see anything change. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's gonna happen next. We're still maybe in pain or confusion. We, you know, we're uncertainty. And we start to wonder, and it's easy to do, is God even there? Does he care about the situation I'm in? Was he listening? Is he there? Well, you're not going to be surprised to hear me say it, but yes, he is there. That thing that came to your mind when I said waiting, God didn't just ignore you when you talked to him about it. Um, he didn't listen and then walk away and be like, oh, I'll get to that later. No, he is sitting right with you. He's in it. That situation that you desperately need to change, that um, answer that you're waiting for, that has you on pins and needles, he's sitting there with you. He's waiting with you. And we've all waited, right? We've all, we've all got that situation. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. Sometimes we're waiting on lots of things, right? So it could be waiting on test results to know if something is serious or really serious or maybe not a big deal at all. Um, you could be waiting on a reply to an email, maybe an email that was scary to send or an answer to an application. You know, you might be waiting to find a special someone to share your life with or maybe you do share your life with someone and you're waiting for them to, to change. You might be waiting on a different kind of relationship to be healed or to be reconciled I was actually just talking today about a friend, uh, a very close friend that no longer speaks to me. And I'm still waiting for that, that situation to be fixed. And it's been a long time. You might be like Holly in today's story, waiting to start your family, waiting for a baby. Or you might already be a parent and maybe you're waiting for your child to be healed or to be helped or to come home. We've all got stuff that we're waiting on. And I think the tricky thing is remembering that God wants to hear from us during that time, because it's not just about the answer to our prayer, right? What happens during the wait is really important. I think that was really evident in Holly's story um, that not only did God answer her prayer, but in a totally different way than she expected or even wanted, but he worked in her and through her during that time of wait, which is really cool. 
Uh, I was thinking about my, my career path when I was working on this part of the study, which uh, it feels funny to call it a path because it's more like a very, very twisty, um, like motion sickness inducing pathway. <laughs> uh, like a really, really hard hiking trail. I don't know, that's how it's felt to me. I'm sure I'm not exaggerating at all. Um, but I thought about how several years ago, I was in an interview for a job and uh, it was a job I didn't necessarily want, but I needed a job. I had been laid off when I was very pregnant. So I needed this job and the manager asked me where I saw myself in five years. And I very boldly told him that I wanted to be um, an editor for Christian books. And so I would be an editor in Christian publishing in five years, which is a strange thing to say because I was applying to work at a real estate office. Um, thankfully, he was not offended that I didn't see myself there in five years. And what's interesting is that I didn't realize in the moment, like the five years that followed that, um, job-wise, well, life-wise, but job-wise were hard and stressful lots of changes, lots of ups and downs, and it felt like more downs than ups. But about five years after that interview, I don't know what brought it to mind, probably God. I realized, you know what I'm doing right now? Uh, no, I'm not working. Like I'm not a big time editor at a big publishing house in New York City. Um, but I did have this part-time job where I was an editor for a website called Encourage. I was an editor for words that God was using to reach the hearts of women. That's not my job anymore, but uh, I am a freelance editor and I have edited some, several books for God to use in people's hearts. And I didn't, I didn't know how he could possibly make this happen. All the obstacles in between, all the no's, all the rejections, all the disappointments, I didn't, I didn't think it was possible, but God didn't give up on me even when maybe I kind of gave up on him. And he was with me that whole time. Every disappointment I felt, every job re rejection, every promotion, promotion that didn't happen, um, he was always there. So I'm thinking that hope when we're waiting is about how we have to acknowledge and accept that we don't know the answer. Like we don't know the solution. We don't know how God can or will solve the problem, but we still trust that he can and will solve the problem. And in the meantime, we turn to him and we ask him to be with us in that wait. And that's why our memory verse for this week, it is something that might be familiar to you, but we've gone a little further than the most commonly um, like clipped out verse. Uh, because I think there's more to it, okay? So Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Those last two sentences I think are so crucial because God is not just promising that he's got a good plan for us, He's promising that no matter what, he will listen to us. And that if we look for him, if we seek him, we will find him. Not just when the answer appears, but all along the way, every step of the way, we will find him. He is with us. Okay, so our reflection question for the week. Think of the part of your life where you've been waiting a long time for an answer or a change. If God doesn't answer your prayers in the way you want, if nothing ever changes in those external circumstances, what truth can you still find hope in? That's what I want us to talk about this week. Go through the five days of the study if you haven't already. Dig into scripture, read the stories, and think about this question. What truth can you still find hope in even if things don't change the way you want them to? or the answer isn't what you're wishing for. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Um, remember to go to encourage.me slash heart of hope to sign up and get your book if you haven't already. 
and I'm going to um, close us in prayer from the book. Oh Lord, we have been waiting so long. You know the desires of our hearts and you know how hard it is to keep waiting. Please be with us, hear us. God, if you are already answering our prayers, please open our eyes to see your hand at work in our lives. And while we wait, create in each one of us a heart of hope in you, your plans, and your promises. Thank you, God, that our hope and future are secure in you. Amen. All right, friends, that's it for this week. I will see you next week for week three. Bye.